everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review. And for today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Mavefex Suicide Squad Joker figure from Mediacom Toys. Now, this figure comes packaged in a window box style of packaging. You've got the figure clearly displayed. Down below, you have an image of the figure, you have the Mavefex name, and it tells us this is figure number 32 in the series. On the sides of the packaging, you just have more images of the Joker figure. And then on the back of the packaging, we have even more images of the figure showing off the various accessories and poses that you can put it in. All right, let's get this open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figure outside the packaging along with the other contents. Now, first of all, we get that typical Mafex figure stand. So done with the clear plastic and you've got the arm, you've got the three holes at the base, which you can attach the arm to any th one of the three holes. And then you've got the articulation so you can rotate there at the base. You've got the back and forth movement. Then you've got the midsection back and forth movement. And then you've got up and down movement up here at the top with the clamp and the clamp just slides on there. So you've got rotation up there as well. And then you can just, uh, put the figure, you know, basically it'll have your figure stand by just clamping it around the waist like that. The figure comes with five different pairs of hands. So you get a pair of closed fisted hands, which are attached to the figure when you first take it out of the packaging. Then you get a pair of grip hands for holding the pistol that he comes with, and you've got the trigger finger. Then he comes with a pair of grip hands for holding the cane that he comes with. Then you get two pairs of open hands, one with the fingers more closed together, and then one where the fingers are more spread apart. And with each of the right hands, you've got little sculpt or paint detail with these little tattoos of card symbols on his knuckles. And then on the left hands, you've got the paint of the mouth tattoo that you see him have in the movie. And I like the detailing with those. And then the skin tone is an almost white type color to match, you know, the Joker's pale skin. Switching out the hands is easy on this one. You just pull off the hand. You've got the little peg on the arm and the hole in the hand. And then you just plug in the one you want to replace it with and it should snap on there nice and tight. We get two different head sculpts with this figure. We get one with a more serious, angry look, and then one with a more kind of laughing, open mouth and eyes wide open look. And I like the detailing on both of these head sculpts. I think they look pretty true to how the character looked in the movie. I like the paint applications. I like the wash effect on the hair. You've got some darker colors with the green hair. And then I like the paint applications around the eyes. I think that looks good and the mouth and the teeth. And then he's got the little tattoos on his forehead and under his eye and over here on his cheek. So I like that. I think they've done a nice job overall with both, both of these head sculpts and capturing the actor's likeness. And switching out the heads is easy. You just pop off the head you want to replace. You've got the little ball joint and then you just pop on the one you want to replace it with and it should pop on there nice and tight. The figure comes with a cane that you see the Joker use in the movie, and this looks pretty true to what he had. You've got the little uh, handle up at the top with the gold metallic trim, and then the rest of the cane is just purple. And then down here at the bottom, you've got some metallic silver and black. The best hand to get him to hold the cane with is the left hand, the, the tighter grip on the left hand, and he'll hold it nice and tight with that one. The, the right hand, the one that has the smaller grip, not talking about the one for the gun, but with the trigger finger, but with the regular grip, he, he can hold it in the right hand, but it's a little more loose in that one, so he's not going to hold it as tight, but you can still get it in there if you want to. And then the final accessory this figure comes with is the Joker signature pistol that you see him have in the movie that's purple, and you've got the metallic gold trim throughout, and you've got the white on the handle. So I like the detailing with this and the gold on the magazine here at the bottom. I think that looks good. So I think the detailing on this pistol is nice. And then make sure you have one of the hands with the trigger finger and he'll hold the gun nice and tight with it. For the rest of the figure, I think they've done a nice job with the sculpting and paint applications. You got a lot of nice detail with this figure. I like how the coat looks. I like the sculpting detail with the line work and you can see uh, the buttons over here are sculpted on there. And I like the wrinkles on the sleeves and everything. Now the coat itself is done with a vinyl material and this is actually removable. However, the sleeves unfortunately are not. So very similar to what I said with the Harley Quinn figure that we looked at the other day from SH Figure Arts. It would have been nice if they'd made the entire jacket removable or given us alternate arms without the sleeves. Um, but as it is, like I said, the jacket's not removable. But I do think the figure looks good with the jacket on and you've got nice detailing with the tattoos and I'll, I'll take the jacket off in a minute and show you that in more detail. And then he's got the Arkham pants. So you've got Arkham written down on the left leg and I think that looks good with the white and it's kind of scratched. And then he's not wearing any shoes so he's got nice sculpting with the toes. 
And the sleeves on the jacket, I think, look good. And I like how the collar looks. So all of that, I think, looks pretty good. Now, if you want to take the jacket off, the easiest way to do it is just to pop off the arms. All the joints on these figures are basically just attached with ball joints. So if you just pop the arms off, then you can just remove the jacket really easy. So as I said, if they had just given us an extra pair of arms without the... Um, without the sleeves, I think that would have been really co a cool extra feature. Now I think with the upcoming nightclub Joker, they're gonna give us a straight jacket version. Um, I'm not sure how that's gonna work exactly, but it may be where you snap off on the upper body with uh, the, night, the straight jacket. Um, so that will be kind of interesting to see. But as it is, like I said, you've got nice detailing with the tattoos on the front here on his chest and it says Joker and he's got the smiley He's got this skull up here and it says ha 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 and he's got some cards on his neck here. So I like all that detailing. No real tattoos on his back. I don't recall us seeing his back in the movie so they probably didn't have anything to go by. I would assume he probably has tattoos on his back with as many as he has on his front. But since we didn't see his back in the movie, I don't think his bare back, I don't think they had anything to go by. So I don't really fault them for leaving his back clean. Otherwise, though, like I said, it's good. I like the skin tone. It's that kind of whitish pale skin. And I think it, the body, the torso matches the neck and, every, and the head pretty good. And then again, the sculpting on the pants with the wrinkles and everything I think looks good. Now, my only complaint comes with uh, this midsection joint. I've had a lot of problems with uh, this midsection joint staying attached. Like I said, these joints are all basically ball joints and they're made to be kind of removable, you know, disassemble. But this midsection joint does not stay attached very well. So when you start moving the figure at all, even sometimes when I've just picked up the figure, the bottom piece is just kind of dropped out. So, you know, like I said, it's something to be a little wary of. It may just be with my figure, I don't know. This figure stands a little over six and a quarter inches tall, not quite six and a half. And here's a comparison with the Mattel six inch multiverse Suicide Squad movie Joker figures. Here's a comparison with Mattel's six inch Joker henchman figure, which was a San Diego Comic Con exclusive. Here's a comparison with the Mafex Dawn of Justice Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman figures. Here's a comparison with the DC Icon 6-inch Joker figure from DC Collectibles. And finally, here's a look at the SH Figure Arts Suicide Squad Harley Quinn figure, which we reviewed the other day. So for articulation, I've removed the figure's jacket just so you can see the points of articulation better. The jacket limits some of the movement a little bit, especially here in the midsection, but not too much. So you can turn the head to the left and to the right, and he can look down about that much, and he can look up pretty good. The entire neck moves, so you can also pivot to the head, to the left, and to the right. You can move at the neck there. Arms attached with these uh, ball hinge joints, so he can get his arm out good, and he's got good rotation there. You can pull these uh, ball joints out from the socket a little bit, so especially with the jacket, you know, that helps with the movement there. And then he's got a rotation up high around the ball joint. And then he's got a, essentially a double hinged elbow, so he can bend his elbow about that much. And then does not have any rotation at the elbow, has rotation at the wrists, and has the hinges on the hands, so you've got some up and down movement. Now the sleeves come down over the, over the wrist, so that limits some of the movement there, but you still get some up and down movement. Then he's got that midsection joint, so you can rotate to the left and right, and he can crunch down pretty good, and he can crunch back or look back pretty good. Now again, with this joint on mine, this is gonna, when you move it around here at the midsection, it's gonna come off pretty easily. So again, I don't know if that's just with my figure or if that's a problem with all of them, but just something to note. And then he's also got a waist swivel, so he can rotate there at the waist, and you can pivot to the left and the right pretty good there. And you can actually crunch down a little bit at the waist and look back there at the waist as well. And I think I mentioned it, but you can pivot to the left and the right at the midsection. Then the legs are attached with a ball joint so he can do the splits good. He can get his leg forward good and he can do his leg back. You can kind of pull the leg down from the socket. And you've got rotation up high with that ball joint. So not a true thigh swivel, but you still got good rotation. And then with the knee, you've basically got a double hinge type knee so he can bend his knee about that much. And then he's got rotation there at the feet. Um, he's got up and down movement and he does have ankle pivot and no peg holes on the bottom of the feet. Oh, and he also has toe articulation. 
Real quick, I just wanted to show you with the jacket on, you still get a pretty good range of movement with the arm there. You can get it out good, and the, the jacket kind of comes out a little bit, but you can still rotate, and you got the rotation around the ball joint and everything. So again, a good, pretty good range of motion with the arm, even with the jacket on. It's really here in the midsection, and part of it's just because it's so hard to move this midsection joint without it kind of coming apart that you know it limits some of the movement. But even still, you can get actual movement there with the jacket on. It just, like I said, with my figure at least it's kind of hard to move with with that midsection joint always coming apart okay so that's my review so overall i think this is a very nice looking figure i like the detailing with the sculpting and i think the paint applications are nice on it my only complaint comes with that midsection joint it's got good range of movement the figure itself does but because of that midsection joint always coming apart it definitely makes my figure and posing it a pain in the butt hopefully it's just an issue with my figure and it's not a problem with all of them but that's definitely something to be wary of when you're looking at this figure. Otherwise, though, like I said, it's a really nice looking figure and I think they've done a good job of capturing the character's likeness with it. Now this figure is available overseas and will soon be available at places like Big Bad Toy Store. We'll have an image gallery up at toynewseye.com. There'll be a link in the video description below. As always, leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If you're so inclined, please like the video. Also, if you haven't already, please follow me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. I'll have links to those in the video description as well. And until next time, I'll catch you later.